Howdy folks, Max Volume here. Decades ago, at our world's headquarters, um, Mike Arnold and I got this manuscript. It's a manuscript written by someone named F.K. Harris. I've searched for F.K. Harris and haven't found anything on him. He was asking us to review and give our evaluation of uh, if this would be a viable book project. You can see this manuscript is typed on very thin paper. I thought it was very interesting. There's a lot of airplanes in it. Uh, weird ones I've never heard of. It's the minutes of a meeting from 1944 where the German High Command asked the airplane manufacturers to show them all their ideas. Wacky, good, bad, whatever you got. And evaluating said projects. Most of the aircraft in this book were never built. Fortunately, there are a number of model kit companies that have made versions of these aircraft. Here it is. Preface. Development program prior to collapse. Meeting of 21 to 22 November 1944. The minutes of a meeting dated 21-22 November 1944 indicate the scope of the development program decided upon a few months before Germany's defeat. The highest priority was to be given to four key types. The Heinkel HE-162, the Messerschmitt ME-262, the Arado 234, and the Dornier 335. Number one. Single-engine fighters. It was not proposed to develop the Messerschmitt ME-109 with the Daimler-Benz DB605L engine in view of the better performance of the Focke-Wulf TA-152, and having regard for the Daimler-Benz commitments in respect to the Daimler-Benz 603 and turbojet research. A proposed ducted radiator installation for the ME-109 was to be dropped in view of the termination of 109 production. However, instructions were given to proceed with the aerodynamic improvement of the ME-109. The Focke-Wulf FW-190 was also to be improved aerodynamically, but further modifications would, in principle, not be carried out. The program for the Focke-Wulf TA-152 was to continue until the completion of the series and the development of the Blum & Voss BV-155 high-altitude fighters for operations up to 52,000 feet was considered imperative, although at the time of the meeting only a small experimental series had been ordered. Number 2. Target Defense Aircraft The importance of target defense was emphasized and consideration was narrowed down to the Messerschmitt 263, a development of the ME-163G, the Heinkel Julia, Bauckham Natter, and the ME-262 Interceptor with supplementary rocket propulsion. It was decided that since these developments were in an advanced state, it was not expedient to abandon any of them. A proposal by the Special Commission for Jet Aircraft and Special Aircraft to defer or reject the ME-263 in favor of the HE-162 was proposed on the ground that further development and series production of the 263 could be based on work already undertaken in connection with the 163. The four types of target defense aircraft already enumerated were to be developed in the following order. ME-262 with supplementary rocket propulsion, Heinkel Julia, ME-263, Bauckham Natter. The development of the BMW rocket 109.708 using nitric acid was to proceed on a high priority as this unit was intended for the last three named developments. Number 3. Multi-Engine Aircraft Mention was made of the building of four prototypes of the DO-635, which was a double DO-335, and it was suggested that a small experimental series of 10 to 20 aircraft should be built. 
At the time of the meeting, work was continuing on the HU-211 with a wooden covered wing. The first tests of the wing had already taken place, and the aircraft was nearly ready for flight, though not with full long-range reconnaissance equipment. The Heinkel firm had been requested to take over the technical direction of the whole project. The HU-211 is a long-range reconnaissance aircraft with a wing of an extremely high aspect ratio. The DO-335 was further developed as a bombing leader aircraft, but cancellation of the development of the DO-435 was recommended since a suitable makeshift two-seat conversion of the 335 was available, and the DO-435 represented practically a new aircraft. Further development of the JU-88 and 388 night fighters was considered essential to achieve increased performance. Speedy results were necessary. The DB603F engine was being developed as a replacement for the BMW 801J and UMO 213 engines in the JU388, but series production was not foreseen before the second half of 1945. The Heinkel HE219 was to be developed only as authorized by the Night Fighter Committee of the EHK. Number four, trainers. Mention is made of the cessation of development, including changing of material and simplification of manufacture, of the BU-181, the AR-396, and the SI-204 trainers. The start of series production of the SK-257 was mentioned. Number five, flying wings. The HO-229 was to be developed in conjunction with Gotha, and three prototypes of the Horton 7 were to be completed. The Lippisch P-11, a parallel development with the HO-229, was to be developed in collaboration with Henschel. Number 6. Research Aircraft Emphasis was placed on the atheted propulsion system of the Lippisch P-13. Concerning the DFS-228 rocket-propelled reconnaissance aircraft, described by the Germans as a glider with rocket unit for altitudes in excess of 65,000 feet, it was stated that the best employment of this type would be decided when the best results were at hand. Many points were to be clarified. For example, bailing out from great heights. Ten prototypes would be completed. Three examples of the DFS-332 rocket-propelled glider were ordered. This was a pure research aircraft for profile measurements at high Reynolds numbers, which could not be obtained in the wind tunnel. Work on the 1068 piloted flying model with rocket propulsion was to continue as planned. This appears to have been a flying scale model of the HE-343. No firm had been designated to build the 8346 research aircraft. Later, Seibel were entrusted with the task. The aircraft was to be used for measurements in the sonic and supersonic ranges. Number 7. Miscellaneous Jet-Propelled Aircraft The Junkers EF-126 project, described in the present report as a ground attack aircraft, was mentioned at the meeting as a heavy fighter, with one or two Argus impulse duct units. Its future depended on Junkers' production capacity. It was clear from the minutes of the meeting that the development of the JU-287 multi-jet high-speed bomber hung in the balance. The HS-132 dive bomber, with pilot in the prone position, was to be subject to a decision on the quantity to be produced. This type is also referred to as a fighter. Number 8. Helicopters The removal of personnel for ME-262 construction would not mean the abandonment of the FA-223, FL-282, 
and the F-A-336 helicopters. Development of the NR-54 knapsack helicopter would continue for a study of the single rotor principle. Work on the WNF Dobelhoff helicopter would likewise proceed. Number 9. Gliders. The future of the KA-430 assault and freight glider was to be subject to a discussion on quantity production. Five examples of a Kranich glider with a prone pilot would be completed by the Schneider concern. The Heinkel HE-162S, a training version of the 162 fighter, is mentioned under the heading gliders and is followed by a reference to the RE-5, also described as a glider for 162 training. The 162S was to be developed by Heinkel in conjunction with the NSFK and the RE-5 by Segelflug Reichenberg. Number 10. Miscellaneous Developments Mention is made under this heading of the Doppelreiter. This was a promising means of carrying additional fuel by deepening the section of the part of the wing, resulting in considerably reduced drag as compared with standard drop tanks and decreased manufacturing time and material. Development of this feature was to be pursued on a high priority for the Messerschmitt ME-109 and the Focke-Wulf 190. Reference is also made to the possibilities of towing extra tanks, bombs, and cheap short-range fighters. <laughs> 